If we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we have the layout of the church meeting. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies edified the church. I would that you all spake with tongues. I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, except I shall speak to you either by revelation, or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine? And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For you shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaks shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned say, Amen, at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understands not what thou sayest? For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my voice I might teach others also, than ten thousands, uh, than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they hear, they not hear me, says the Lord. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serves not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so, falling down on his face, he will worship God, and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. 
If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that is sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For you may all prophesy, one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saint. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it only to you? Came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues, that all things be done decently and in order. This is the biblical strategy, the biblical meeting, where everybody is involved. Well, the women should keep silence. That is also what happens in the true Church of God. So, as you can see, this uh, kind of, of uh, meeting is quite different from most churches today, even Pentecostal churches, uh, yes, they speak in tongues. Uh, I think in the beginning of the Pentecostal movement, it was it was a genuine outpouring of the Holy Spirit, uh, and, and the speaking in tongues were done according to the Bible. Um, the whole thing here is that, uh, of course, the church is a supernatural thing. There are uh, spiritual gifts i mean we have gifts of prophesying we have gifts of healing we have uh, gifts with words of wisdom and, and 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 gifts of faith we have many gifts from the holy spirit which are supposed to be working in our midst but paul says do not quench the holy spirit and unfortunately there is very little holy spirit in most churches today there might be a hyped up atmosphere by good music, by dancing and shouting and clapping in hands. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is holy. And he will not come uh, and allow uh, his presence to, to fill and to, to minister to people if they do not come on the terms of the Bible. If they are not working according uh, to the will of of God so to me it's better to be alone and read the Bible for myself and worship God and then uh, when I have some brothers and sisters we are fellowship being together of course I miss that part because I'm many times I'm alone uh, but to me most of the so-called churches today are regular mafia they want your money or and they want to control what you are thinking so it's a mind control uh, church is not something that happens on sunday actually the sunday meeting is something that came from the emperor constantine uh, around the year 321 uh, where he tried to Christ, uh, make the christian church becoming a, a part of of the roman empire's religious system and for him uh, his favorite god was sol invictus that is the sun god and so he put the day of the Sunday to become like the new Sabbath. 
and the, only this fact that you are having a Sunday morning or Sunday evening service on the Sunday as being the Sabbath that is uh, a false doctrine and of course God will not accept it uh, the true believers they will meet any time any day uh, there is in the new covenant there is really no emphasis on the Sabbath day it's good to have a day to relax and if you want to have the Sabbath that is actually beginning on Friday evening at 6 o'clock and it's lasting until Saturday evening at 6 o'clock so do you want to have a, a one weekly meeting where you're gonna go come and follow the traditions from the Old Testament when they came to the synagogue well it's be you better you do like that you have a, a meeting on Friday evening celebrating the Sabbath uh, God bless you and walk with God Remember, you don't need anybody to teach you. You have all received anointing if you're born again. And the Holy Spirit will teach you everything. God bless you. Amen.